Why couldn't they have just waited until the end of the talk when he came out to get his newspaper? Okay? Every state has the same gun control uh, investigation and regulatory questions like, uh, what's the problem? Who's getting killed? Wait a minute. Virginia is the safe, uh, safest state. Pepper County, including saying he would deputize those whose firearms would be threatened by confiscation under proposed legislation by the Northam administration. A very powerful stand and somebody that I'm proud to introduce, Sheriff Jenkins. Thank you.
this arm. We have many good men and women serving as sheriffs and commonwealth's attorney who have strong feelings just like myself and have their own ideas of how they should step forward and protect your rights. I ask that you all return to your homes and ask your elected officials exactly where is the line that they will not cross. That is the one message you can take with you today and definitely have an impact. Thank you to the VCBL. Thank you to all of our state and Capitol Police officers here serving today for this great event. Please take a moment to thank them for their service and remember, they are part of us. They understand our message and they are not against us. Law enforcement is on your side. Thank you. And I absolutely to echo that. Yeah, all the police officers that are here, uh, thank you so much for being here and protecting all of us. Um, and, you know, Virginia has some of the best sheriffs around. And we've got a great law enforcement in general. Very proud of our Virginia law enforcement. Sheriff Danny Diggs uh, is another sheriff who stands solidly, solidly with law abiding gun owners. I've known Sheriff Diggs for many years, and his unwavering support sets a high bar for others to follow. He is in his sixth term and helps with various charities as well. Sheriff Diggs. Thank you. I'm from Yorktown where we struggled against a tyrannical government and gained our independence in 1781. It's been about 240 years and we are now faced with tyranny again. We should not have to struggle to win our freedoms again. We want our legislators to listen and to respect our federal and state constitutions and our right to keep and bear arms. But being here today is part of that struggle and we are committed to winning that struggle. We should not be underestimated in our resolve to be free. Recently, I was reelected and I had to take the oath of office once again. While I had taken that oath several times, this time I had an intense feeling of commitment about supporting, defending, and upholding the constitutions of both the United States and the Constitution of Virginia. Our Constitution protects us from the government taking away our rights that were given to us by God not given to us by the government to be taken away on a whim. The governor and the Democrats have ignored the Constitution and trampled on our rights. He has even disarmed law enforcement officers here today, telling us that it's to keep us safe. Yet here we are, like defenseless caged animals. Disarming law-abiding citizens does not make us safer. It emboldens criminals and puts us all at risk. It is my job to uphold the Constitution and to protect you not only from crime, but to protect you from the abuses of government. I can assure you that many of my fellow sheriffs and I will do all that we can to keep you safe from criminals and from a corrupt government. May God bless all of you inside of this fence, bless all the patriots outside of the fence, and bless this Commonwealth. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Okay, um, Jan Morgan is a political analyst at Fox Business, a representative of 2A Women, a firearms instructor, and she owns a commercial gun range. She came here from Arkansas to show support and stand in solidarity with Virginia's gun owners as we say no more gun control. Jan.
you to know, I looked at tyrant dictionary today, and here's what it said. Right beside the word tyrant, here was the definition. Virginia Governor Ralph Northam. Folks, I don't know. We absolutely must win this battle. I want you to know that right now, and I'm sure you're feeling it, it feels like this is an overwhelming battle, right? They're too far gone, too many Democrats in the House and the legislature. But let me tell you something. You can't give up. If ever in the history of the world, this is not the reason to say, I give up. This is too much. This is too big. This is not the time. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. But they're underwear. It's always easy because just where the snow and the ice was working the ski. So, folks, we don't have it. If ever anybody had a reason to say, I give up, it was those guys. And they didn't give up. They gave us a republic. And we must keep it. So it is time to, to pay forward that precious gift. We must pay it forward, folks. America is not waiting for a return of the Founding Fathers. America is waiting for you to become one of them, one of our Founding Fathers. It is time to stand up, fight back, and never give up and elect a new government. Love you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tony Myers moved to Tony Myers moved to Virginia from D.C. and was quickly spoiled on the freedom we have here in Virginia. He wants to protect Virginia from the oppressive type of government they have in D.C. His address to the Suffolk City Council on Suffolk becoming a Second Amendment, Second Amendment sanctuary was outstanding, you, and I wanted him here to talk to you guys. Yeah, Tony. The counties of Virginia stand with the Constitution. In response, Donald McEachin proposed having the National Guard disarm Virginians by force. The government kicking down the doors of innocent people to steal their property at gunpoint is the exact opposite of public safety. We are not here today simply to protest bad politics. We are here to oppose violent oppression disguised as law. Title 18 of the U.S. Code, Section 241, states in part, if two or more persons conspire to oppress, threaten, or intimidate any person in the exercise of any right secured to him by the Constitution, they shall be fined under this title or imprisoned. Translation, Ralph Northam is a felon. His crime is called conspiracy against rights. Make no mistake, gun rights are civil rights. In Virginia, gun laws were originally invented to deprive my Native American ancestors of our rights, and today he wants to do the same to all of you. We must not let that happen. We as Virginians must never give in to compromise or complacency, because when rulers run amok, no right is safe. Today, they are coming for the AR-15. Tomorrow, it'll be the shotgun. The next day, your freedom of speech, and the day after, your children. Because when you attack the rights of gun owners, you attack the safety of the families they are protecting. We as Virginians must rise above this. Second Samuel chapter 23, verse 3 says, he that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. Governments are accountable to the people, but more importantly, they are accountable to God, and he requires them to protect the rights of the innocent. Today, we stand and boldly declare that we are not the dumping ground of the legislatures. We are Virginia. We are not a socialist experiment. We are Virginia. And most importantly, we will not be slaves to nutso Northam and yeah. overbearing Herring. We are Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Jeff Katz is a radio talk show host here in Richmond, Virginia on WRVA from 3 to 6 p.m. on weekdays. 
WRVA. of the Virginia Capitol Police, the Virginia State Police, the Richmond Police Department, the FBI's Richmond Field Office for protecting each of us. We are gathered on January the 20th, 2020 here on Capitol Square, and we need to remember the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, who said, we may have all come on different ships, but we are in the same boat now. Today, we have men and women from throughout Virginia and all around the United States who stand together to support and defend our rights. Many of us are here to show support for the importance of our Second Amendment rights to protect our family, our friends, our neighbors, our fellow parishioners. There are people in attendance today who have never owned a firearm, some who will never touch a gun, and some who go shooting on a weekly basis. What unites us is our understanding of the threat to our rights. These are rights not granted to us by the government, but by God. Amen. The rights to speak freely, to worship freely, and defend ourselves, these are rights which are inalienable. These are rights which are bestowed on us by God rights we as decent people and Americans must always stand on guard to protect so that we may pass them on to our sons and daughters. Yesterday, I was at Colonial Shooting Academy on Broad Street and the great Griff Jenkins from Fox News walked up to me and he said, Jeff, what would you say to Governor Northam if he were standing in front of you? I did pause for a few seconds because I do consider myself a Southern gentleman. And then I said to Griff, I'd like to say thank you to Governor Northam. I would like to thank Governor Northam for exposing the real agenda of his party. I would like to thank Governor Northam for reminding all of us that elections have consequences. I would like to thank Governor Northam for inspiring and motivating proud Virginians to stand up in support of each other's rights. That, my fellow Virginians, is the Virginia way. I want to close by sharing a few words from Pastor Martin Niemoller, who so many years ago taught us that if we do not stand up for those who are hurting others, there will be nobody left to stand up for us when evildoers come for us. Reverend Niemoller said, they came for me and there was no one left to speak out for me. Make no mistake, the governor has targeted Second Amendment supporters today. The question is, who will he target next? Thank you all for being here. Thank you to BCDL for the gracious invitation. God bless you. God bless our great commonwealth. And may God bless America. Thank you. Great job. Okay, I introduced earlier Eric Pratt with Gun Owners of, uh, of, Gun Owners of America. Um, and uh, they, they've had extremely close, close ties to BCDL since the inception of BCDL. So with no further ado, I would like to pass this to Eric. Patriots of America, how are we doing? I want to thank you all for being here today, and especially to those of you from out of state for traveling here to stand with us Virginians under less than ideal circumstances. What we are witnessing today is a travesty. It is shameful. 
what Lord Northam has done. Does Virginia need more gun control? No. Let them hear you in the legislative building. Do we need more gun control? No. Lord Northam has, without authority, violated the constitutions of Virginia, of the United States. He has violated the law of Virginia by disarming law-abiding citizens during a contrived state of emergency. What Northam has done is completely lawless. That's why GOA and VCDL took him to court this past week to challenge his gun ban. Sadly, the first judge completely ignored state law. The law expressly prohibits the governor from infringing upon Second Amendment rights during a declared emergency. But you want to know something interesting? Guess who voted for that law? Guess who, when he was in the state Senate, voted to prevent future governors from denying gun owners' rights during declared emergencies? Ralph Blackface Northam. In other words, do as I say, not as I do. You see, this isn't about authority, folks. Democrats in this state are exercising sheer, unadulterated power without authority. So GOA and VCDL, we appealed our case to the Virginia Supreme Court on Friday, but the court punted. They never actually ruled that the governor's order was lawful. Instead, they used a procedural tactic to leave the gun ban in place for today. So if you're inside the fence, here we are. We've been subjected to an egregious disarmament, just as was done by General Gage to our founding fathers in 1774. Virginia's royal Lord Dunmore did the same thing in 1775, when under the cover of night, he raided the colonial magazine. Democrats like Northam are following in their footsteps today, and they're copying the pattern of Democrats of old, the very ones who told Martin Luther King Jr. that he wasn't good enough to carry a gun. He couldn't be trusted. Democrats denied his application for a carry permit in 1956, and they're still trying to deny our gun rights today. As we stand here today, on a day that honors King, I have one simple message. No one who is listening to my voice right now should ever again vote for the party of gun control. Never. I'm talking about the party of Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and yes, Lord Northam. Their party is anti-rights. It's anti-gun. Their party has declared war on the Second Amendment. And whenever they gain power, they set out to ban people's guns. No gun owner should ever help them get a majority at the state or federal level. And let me give you a word of encouragement. If you have not been voting, please make sure that you are registered to vote. I'm not going to embarrass anybody, ask for a show of hands as to who has and who hasn't been voting. But if you're not registered, please get registered to vote. Get your adult children registered, your pro-gun friends and family, and get them to the polls. That's the best way that we can make a difference. It's by replacing these lawbreakers. We need to throw the bums out. We need to clean house in the next election. You know, I mentioned what our founding fathers went through. There is a lot that we can learn from them because they were not strangers to oppression. On this day, 242 years ago, do you know where Virginian George Washington was? He and his men were freezing their butts off at Valley Forge. Men were dying. You think it's cold here? They were dying from exposure, influenza, and pneumonia. Almost 2,000 of his troops died during that stay at Valley Forge. So how did that ragtag group win against a better funded, well-rested enemy? Let me tell you, one of my favorite portraits of all time 
is hanging in my office right now. It's a portrait of George Washington in the snow at Valley Forge next to his horse, praying. I'm sure many of you have seen that picture. And yes, I'm sure it's embellished somewhat, just like many other pictures from that time period. But many of the people who knew Washington said that was the kind of man that he was. He was a man of prayer. And that's why I like that portrait. It's a reminder to me of where the real battle is won. And George Washington knew this. And so did our other founding fathers. Listen to the words of Thomas Jefferson, another Virginian, penned in the Declaration of Independence. He said that in the midst of the war that they were fighting, that they were appealing to the supreme judge of the world to give them the help that they needed. The supreme judge of the world? Look, folks, they weren't talking about the United Nations. Those are the words that every founding father signed his name to in agreement. And for us, we would do well to remember their example. But you know who else should remember their example? Lord Northam. He doesn't recognize the God-given rights that are spoken of in the Declaration of Independence. He thinks our rights are mere privileges. He wants to take your gun rights away, but let me ask you again. Does Virginia need more gun control? No! How will disarming you and me lower the crime rate? That's the question he can never answer, nor can he tell us how any of the new laws that he's advocating would have stopped the tragedy in Virginia Beach last year. He can't answer that question either. Look, I'm running out of time, so let me end with this. I'm cutting this short, but we have a powerful speaker coming up next who's going to talk to you about how we really stop a bad guy with a gun, because it's not gun control. Gun control doesn't stop bad guys with guns. Background checks don't stop bad guys with guns. A good guy with a gun does, and he's going to speak to you in just a second. But let me say this. The passion and the activism that's here today, it has to be a way of life. We have to stay vigilant. We have to pray. We have to vote, or we are going to lose our rights. The governor may think that he has won the day today, but he has only strengthened our resolve. As John Paul Jones said, when all hope seemed lost and the British commander ordered him to surrender the ship, he said, I have not yet begun to fight. Everyone, this here is a start. It is not the finish line. We will not compromise. Thank you for being here today. Well Amen. done. Well done. Well done. Thank well you, Eric. Done. The next person, a plumber by trade, saved countless lives at a mass shooting at a Texas church in Sutherland Springs in 2017. Without hesitation or concern for his own safety, he grabbed an AR-15 and ran barefoot toward the sound of gunfire. He didn't run away from it, he ran towards it. Coming from, uh, the, the gunfire coming from a church and he engaged in a gunfight with a mass murderer. The murderer lost. Let's have a round of applause for Stephen Williford. Thank you very much. I just want to say I'm going to go a little bit off the script here, and I'm going to tell you that this is more scary than facing someone shooting at you. <laughs> I'm from Sutherland Springs. My community is under 600 people. And on November 5th, 2017, evil came into our church and started killing my neighbors. I grabbed my AR-15, the same kind of rifle that these politicians are trying to ban today. And I ran across the street. I confronted him in gunfire. He hit the truck in front of me, the car behind me, and the house behind me. And I hit him. Had I had anything other than an AR-15, I probably would have been counted among the casualties he had on Class 3 body armor. Now that you know a little bit about me, I want to talk about who you are as Virginians. Virginia is the state, the birthplace of the Declaration of Independence, the state instrumental in designing the Constitution of the United States, one of the greatest con uh, documents ever written. Virginia, where founding fathers 
like George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and James Madison crafted the Bill of Rights. These rights are protections from the very government that sits in this Capitol building and tries to strip them from you. These rights were given to you by God, not by them. Thomas Jefferson wrote himself, the constitution of most of the states assess that all power is inherent in the people, that it is their right and duty, get that duty, to be armed at all times. This freedom has been fought for and proclaimed in your streets, your cities, and your countryside. The blood of American patriots has been spilled here for that freedom. Freedom for tyranny, freedom for a government that ignores the voices of its people. Now all of America's eyes are on you, Virginia, wondering whether you will let your rights be encroached upon. This is not just a Virginia problem. We dealt with governments trying to disarm us before. In 1775, hundreds of British troops marched on Lexington and Concord to confiscate a cache of weapons, knowing that if they could disarm us, they could control us. They were met by over 2,000 Minutemen, farmers, trade owners, and shop, shop owners. Together, these men drove back the British and they kept their arms and their rights to bear them. This launched a war that would give birth to the greatest nation this world has ever known. You got them going, you got them going. Less than 100 years later, in 1835, the Mexican military con controlled by Santa Ana attempted to seize weapons from Texas settlers. When they arrived to seize the we weapons, they were met with a, uh, a flag bearing the sign of a cannon and the words, come and take it. Woo! The Mexican soldiers were met with a hastily formed militia of Texans and they were repelled. Gonzalez kept its cannon. And the Texans with volunteers of other states, including Virginia, won their independence, became a republic, and joined the United States of America. 14 of your own Virginians fought and died at the Alamo. From the Civil War to World War I and World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, and present conflicts, Brave men and women have fought and died and answered the call for freedom. We fought these battles before. Now, instead of sending an army, the government is sitting in this house that you built and trying to legislate away your rights. We will not stand for it. This time, with the wars of past, behind us. Let us use our voices to proclaim freedom loudly again and let them know they will not disarm us. James Madison, the crafter of the Constitution, believed our freedoms would more likely be gradually and silently encroached upon than violently taken away. These men in power are trying to silent encroachment and take away our rights, hoping that the people would be too complacent and too lazy to stand against them. Well, we're not either lazy or complacent. We won't stand for it. We won't stand idly by and watch our Constitution and our rights that American soldiers throughout history have shed their blood and died for be destroyed. Let's stand in solidarity and use our voices to let people in this capital know 
we will not let them take our rights away. President Ronald Reagan said it best, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on through the bloodstream. It must be fought for and protected and handed to our children for them to do the same. We must be vigilant, we must be united, and we must stand tall and speak loudly. As the heart cannot tell the lungs I have a that you have cancer, but I do not, so it's none of my affair. Neither can we stand by from California to Texas, all the way to Maine and all states in between and say that it is none of my affair. It affects all of us. The world is watching right now to see what we'll do. Let it never be said that it is my generation that failed to stop, stop all this tyranny, that it was my generation that let it down for my children and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren and even their children. We have three boxes in which to defend our freedom, it's been said. The first box is the soapbox, which I stand on today and speak, and so does everybody here. The second box is the ballot box. November, go out, get registered, and vote. The third and final box is the cartridge box. Let's hope that we are generations away from using the cartridge box because it's the last ditch mo moment. I need to let everybody know today, including the people in this building, we are not the aggressors here. We are here coming in peace. We are not the aggressors. But we will not comply with bans, registration, or confiscation. We will not comply. That's right. We, Listen to that. <laughs> we as legal gun owners, as citizens, we have our backs against the wall. And we will not negotiate anymore. It's time to take back. No more negotiations. If they come to our homes to take our arms and to infringe on our freedoms and violate our freedom, they are the aggressors. They cannot come into our homes. They are the aggressors. And we will stand together. Thank you for standing with me today. God bless Virginia. All right. yeah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. We stand together. Yeah. Yes. 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 Love you, brother. Well done. Well done. Awesome. You keep that. You want to keep that one? USA. 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 Stand up. No more gun control. No more gun control. No more gun control. No more gun control. I want to thank Ted Bilshire, Layla Myers, Ed Levine, Joanna Smith, Ted Van Wick, and Josh Jock, Pat Webb, Bruce Jackson, Brenda Moon, Brenda Moon, and the lobby team and the members of lobby today in the morning. And all of you who came here peacefully to support the rights of Virginia gun owners who in turn will hopefully protect the rights of some of you political people who came here from other states to protect us. This concludes Lobby Day 2020. I look forward to seeing you next year, same as the same thing for you the King's birthday. Have a great afternoon and have a safe Christmas. Thank you so much. We haven't gotten any word of anything yet.
Rock and roll. Love you guys. Can I jump up and get a picture with you, sir? Thank you, State Police. Thank you. God bless. Here, I got you. Let's go, Al. 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 Let's go,